Coach, you you keep it real. <laughs> you say what you need to say and speak your mind. Uh, because of it, there may be a people that feel like you speak for them, that your voice carries weight, even if you guys say the same thing. Do you feel that at all? And if so, do you accept that responsibility? Um, you know, I, I just uh, try to react when I think it's appropriate and uh, try to be real and try to be fair. With that said, there are a lot of people right now that may not be feeling you know, good about certain events that happened this week. I think you know what those events are. And they want to know how you feel about it. Do you feel who's, the same who's way? They, they, who's they? Minorities, people just they around. way too much credit. <laughs> they care. I don't it, think my voice is that important. But it is. I've spoken on this before, and I probably will again. But right now I'm just trying to formulate thoughts. It's, it's too early. I'm still sick to my stomach. And not basically because the Republicans won or anything, but uh, the disgusting tenure and tone and all the comments that have been xenophobic, homophobic, racist, misogynistic. And I, I live in that country where half the people ignored all that to elect someone. That's the scariest part of the whole thing to me. It's got nothing to do with the environment and Obamacare and all the other stuff. We live in a country that ignored all those values that we would hold our kids accountable for. They'd be grounded for years if they acted and said the things that have been said in that campaign by Donald Trump. Uh, I look at the evangelicals and I wonder, those values don't mean anything to them? All those values, to me, are more important than anybody's skill in business or anything else because it tells who we are and how we want to live and what kind of people we are. And that's why I have great respect for people like Lindsey Graham and John McCain, John Kasich, who I disagree with on a lot of political things, but they had enough fiber and respect for humanity and uh, tolerance for all groups uh, to say what they said about the man. And that's what worries me. You know, I get it. Of course we wanted to be successful. We're all going to say that. Everybody wants it to be successful. You know, it's our country. We don't want it to go down the drain. Uh, but any reasonable person would come to that conclusion. But it does not take away the fact that he used that fear-mongering and uh, all the, the comments, you know, from day one, you know, uh, the, the race baiting with trying to make Barack Obama, our first black president, illegitimate. Uh, so... Uh, it, it, it leaves me wondering where I've been living and with whom I'm living. And the fact that people can just gloss that over and start talking about the transition team and, you know, we're all going to be kumbaya now and try to make the country good without talking about any of those things. Uh, and now we see that he's already backing off on immigration, on Obamacare and other things. So was it a big fake? Uh, which makes you feel that's even more disgusting and cynical, that somebody would use that to get the base that fired up to get elected. And what gets lost in the process are African Americans and Hispanics and women uh, and the gay population, not to mention uh, the eighth grade developmental stage exhibited by him when he made fun of the handicapped person. I mean, come on. That's what a 7th grade, 8th grade bully does. And he was elected president of the United States. We would have scolded our kids. We would have had discussions and talked until we were blue in the face trying to get to understand these things. And he is in charge of our country. That's disgusting. I know personally... I'm not done. Oh, sorry. <laughs> And, you know, one could go on and on. I mean, it's, it's, it, we didn't make this stuff up. Uh, you know, he's angry at the media because they reported what he said and how he acted. That's, it's ironic to me. It just makes no sense. But 
So that's my real fear, and that's what uh, gives me so much pause and makes me feel so badly that uh, the country is willing to be that intolerant and not understand the empathy that's necessary to understand other group situations. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a rich white guy, and I'm sick to my stomach thinking about it. I, I can't imagine being a Muslim right now or a, a woman or an African-American, an Hispanic, a handicapped person, uh, how disenfranchised they might feel. And for anyone in those groups that voted for them, it's just beyond my comprehension how they ignore all that. And so my final conclusion is my big fear is we are Rome. <laughs>